Welcome back, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Can't wait to get into today's topic, which is episode 3233, and it's why the low hormone levels. So I got a great question the other day from the internal health coaching team. We have such amazing health coaches on our team, and we we're actually talking about sex hormone binding globulin. I was talking with actually the, the vice president of uh, the health coaching department, and we had a nice conversation on this, and I wanted to be able to go deeper, and I said, great, I'm going to create a podcast to share with people why their testosterone levels or their estrogen levels might be on the lower side. Now, of course, when women hit menopause or men hit maybe andropause, they start to get lower levels of estrogen and for men specifically, lower levels of testosterone. But what if you're not in your 70s or later 60s and you say, oh, I ran my testosterone and you know it's a little bit lower or my total testosterone looks pretty good but my free testosterone is low. Why is that? Well, there's a protein that can actually bind to these hormones called sex hormone binding globulin. Usually produced in the liver, what it does is it doesn't allow testosterone to get to the tissues, right? So free testosterone is not able to be used. That's why just running total testosterone is not the best way to look at your testosterone levels. So what I want to share with you here today are the three main reasons that can increase sex hormone binding globulin. And just like it says, it binds to the, the testosterone, the free testosterone, so it's no longer free. And then it transports it through the bloodstream and keeps it away from the tissues. So you don't get to use it. So really important that if we want and we're doing all the healthy things that we can be doing in life and we end up with lower levels of testosterone, lower levels of estrogen, especially for women, like what can we do about this? Well, let's dive into the show here. So sex hormone binding globulin is affected by three main things. And that is your overall testosterone and estrogen levels. So we'll talk about that in just a second, your insulin levels, as well as your liver based health. So just real quick, like why would I say testosterone and estrogen? Well, if there's a relatively high level of estrogen in a male's body, believe it or not, it increases sex hormone binding globulin. So if you're converting more testosterone to estrogen, sex hormone binding globulin increases. That means that even if you don't have high levels of testosterone, it can start to bind up testosterone in your body. Not ideal. All right. Next thing is if there's any type of liver-based congestion, so uh, by that I mean more oxidative stress or inflammation. Let's say that you're used to having a couple of drinks of alcohol every night, or you have elevated levels of cholesterol, or you're eating a, a bit of processed food, or you have any type of uh, viral-based issue, anything that's creating inflammation in the liver. This can actually increase or decrease sex hormone binding globulins based on what's going on in your liver at that time. So that's a huge one. Other things that affect the liver are iron levels. So men and women are not meant to have high iron levels, but men specifically should not have elevated levels of iron in their blood because it's very difficult to remove that. Short of essentially giving blood, really hard for men to get rid of iron in their blood, whereas women, as long as they're having a menstrual-based cycle, can remove some of that iron on a month basis that isn't needed. This is why, although I am a huge proponent of running at-home functional medicine live tests, it's how I learned how to get better and how hundreds of thousands of others in our practice do as well, it's still important to run your blood work at least annually. Like It's still important to do that because the annual blood work is going to allow you to see things like your ferritin levels for your iron. iron. All right, so the last one I wanted to share with you before we just kind of pull all of this together and how like amazing and intricate the human body is, is that if your thyroid levels are off, it can also increase sex hormone binding globulin. And this is extremely important and it's probably the most overlooked. So people kind of get it. If you have really high testosterone levels or you have really high estrogen levels, the body's like, whoa, there's way too much hormone. We're going to increase more sex hormone binding globulin to pull down the level, right? There's just too much of it. That makes total sense. All right. If you have an issue with your liver and there's inflammation because of too much LDL cholesterol production or cholesterol production in general, uh, which some of it can be inflammatory, some of it not inflammatory. Uh, let's say consuming alcohol or certain medications uh, or viral based issues. Yeah, there's inflammation and the body's then dysregulated in how much sex hormone binding globulin it can produce. So that makes total sense. What doesn't always make sense as part of this equation and what a lot of practitioners overlook is the thyroid's role in 
sex hormone binding globulin. So let me share with you this, that when there are elevated levels of T3, so the body's producing higher levels of thyroid-based hormone, there can be an increase in sex hormone binding globulin production. And by the way, on blood work, it just shows up as SHG, uh, S HBG, sex hormone binding globulin. So if you ever see it just as SHBG, then you know what that is now. Okay. So um, for many of us in the functional medicine based field, the theory on this that we believe is that in a greater state of metabolic stress, the body is going to produce more thyroid hormone. It does that because that improves so many other metabolic based factors. It can improve fat burning, it can fat oxidation, uh, it can improve overall blood circulation. It's just like thyroid hormones, really important for revving the body up and keeping up with essentially cortisol levels with the adrenals. Now it can't do that forever, but in the short term, it makes sense. Like, okay. So, cause it's also going to raise oftentimes when you're in that state, elevated levels of testosterone. So makes sense to me. Now the opposite can also be true. True. Low levels of thyroid hormone can often decrease sex hormone binding globulin. That means if your body's in a more weakened state or lower metabolic rate, it does not produce as much sex hormone binding globulin because your body wants you to start producing more androgens to lift you out of that lower metabolic state. So really important that you look at that. And that is why there's one lab that shows you all of this information. And that's the stress mood and metabolism test. Literally, it's the best lab out there for looking at all of these markers because it goes through, and I talked about yesterday on on the PCOS um, based show we did. It literally looks at estrogen and progesterone and testosterone and DHEA. Um, then it's going to look at cortisol throughout the day, your stress hormones. Then it's going to look at thyroid, T4, T3, TSH, TPO antibodies. Then it's going to look at vitamin D. Then it's going to look at insulin and hemoglobin A1C. And why would insulin be important? Well, this is a really great one, I believe, to end with. And that is because, and a lot of people, again, they they this is overlooked because this isn't just you know common knowledge. It's not just kind of thrown out there like, oh, when you're on a low-carb diet, you uh, decrease insulin levels, which unfortunately can increase sex hormone binding globulin, right? And so one of the issues that we can have is that all the things that we're trying to do with the body, sometimes the body pushes back in its own way. And so what I just try to share with people is that the goal is not to overdo anything in one area. So if you greatly stress the body, it will push back right? It will push back eventually with chronic stress by starting to slow hormone production. And I, we see that all the time. It can lower testosterone in men, and it does. Lower progesterone, especially progesterone in women. Lower thyroid hormone, specifically and especially in women, much mo more so, double the rate than in men. Uh, it will, what else is it going to do? Increase uh, cortisol levels in the evening and decrease in the morning. So you have less energy in the morning and unfortunately don't sleep as well at night. This, this is not, oh, every once a while it happens. No, this is something that we see all the time in our practice. So we have to be careful. I have no issue with intermittent fasting. I have no issue with like a fasting day. I have no issue with uh, functional medicine detox. What I have an issue with is chronic low carb fasting. And there's basically no end in sight because what happens is it can, if the insulin levels begin to drop too low, then sex hormone binding globulin actually increases. And it's simply a, it's another stress on the body and the body responds in kind. So my goal for people is not to say, we need to keep you fat in a fasted state all the time. No, your body doesn't want to be under that type of stress. It says, yeah, we'll go through periods of fasting and cleaning of the body through autophagy. And we also then have periods where the body's like, oh, there's food, there's carbohydrates. Oh, we feel so great. What does it do? Then it calms the uh, stress levels, which means it balances thyroid levels. It balances insulin, something called leptin and ghrelin. And I did a show uh, many years ago on leptin and ghrelin, which are essentially your hunger hormones. Well, you want to keep those balanced. And by including at least one or two kind of refeed meals per week, if you're doing low carb, it enables you to start to tell your thyroid and the rest of your body, keep burning body fat. We're in a good place. We're not starving. And it allows us to stay more balanced. So remember, whenever you're looking at your hormones, it's not as simple as saying, oh, take this ashwagandha, take this tongat ali, take... No, it's not. It is a process of rebalancing the body at homeostatic levels, 
to create equilibrium where the body feels at ease, right? And so what I would do is, of course, always look at the de-stress protocol that I talk about in the rain barrel effect, but you want to run the stress mood and metabolism test. You want to see what's off with you. Is testosterone off? Is estrogen off? And if so, is cortisol elevated at night? Is th our thyroid levels beginning to go a little bit lower? What's insulin look like? So all of these things do matter. And as you keep your body balanced, it repays you in kind with great energy, great libido, great endurance, great ambition, great drive, great just vitality for life. That's really what it's all about. So um, if you find yourself with higher levels of sex hormone binding globulin, we want to kind of fix the above. So typically what we're doing is, again, we're following the de-stress protocol for the rain barrel effect, but we're running that lab for stress mood and metabolism. Then we're doing something like the 21-day functional medicine detox by Equalife to reset those liver, to basically improve and speed up liver detoxification, phase one and phase two. That's what we're doing. Then after that, we're looking at clean food, Exercise, not overdoing exercise, but absolutely exercise to keep the body far more balanced and then optimizing sleep. So we're doing all the, again, the de-stress protocol, diet, exercise, stress reduction, tox removal, rest, emotional-based balance, scientifically backed supplements, and a success mindset. When you do all those things, you don't need to be perfect. I always say, you know, be 80% in all those eight categories and work on them. You don't have to be perfect. And as you do, the body begins to rebalance on its own. And as the body rebalances, it becomes healthy. And a healthy body, well, it just can't be sick. So hopefully this is helpful. All the show notes, all the links will be at stephencabral.com slash 3233 for today's show. Do always feel free to share the show with anyone you believe you could serve. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.